It's a pleasure having all of you. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, to share with you a story. Actually, a story started like uh, four years ago when Engineer Ahmed and his team visited the NRC and uh, discussed with us all the solutions available from Elsevier, including GeoFacets. I found actually GeoFacets is a, a useful tool. I started using it by myself and I found it a very useful tool. So uh, from that point, I decided to share my experience and knowledge about as a professional user of GeoFacets with everyone. Hopefully that everyone can make use of it in his career and work, especially it's a very general and handy and have a lot of useful resources. Uh, so uh, um, the topic of the presentation today is called Unearth Information Efficiently with GeoFacets. Uh, and uh, I'd actually like to introduce myself briefly. And my name is Hisham Khalyubi, of course I'm Egyptian. Uh, my, I got my bachelor degree uh, from Cairo University back in 87, and then I got a diploma in computer science and information system from Cairo University as well in 90. Then I got my master's degree from Cairo University in geophysics and my PhD from the University of Arizona in the US through a, a program, joint program between Egypt and the US called Channel Program, that's in 01. Uh, after that, I worked as a postdoc in the University of Arizona in the hydrology and water resources uh, through a Fulbright grant postdoc grant. Then I worked uh, in as associate professor at King Abdul Aziz University in Saudi Arabia, teaching in the geophysics department over there. Then I worked as a senior research associate in the UK in Lancaster University from 09 to 10. Uh, then I, I used to work as a geophysical consultant uh, for uh, Saudi Geological Survey in Saudi Arabia, doing a lot of consultancy and field work in, in, in geophysics and geotechnical engineering. Uh, then I turned back to academia, teaching at Sultan Qaboos University in Oman from 12 to 16. And finally turned back to my home country in Egypt as a professor of geophysics at the National Research Center. Then I have been appointed as a chair or the head of geophysics, geophysical science department and at the NRC from 18 to present. Uh, my research experience are mainly in near surface applied geophysics in groundwater and minerals exploration, uh, also environmental engineering uh, geophysics. Uh, the tools I'm interested in, or the techniques I'm a lot of experience in, is electrical, electromagnetic, GPR, geophysical techniques, but also do use other techniques as well. I'm mainly interested in fraud and inverse modeling. Uh, all my research papers and publications are available in Google Scholar, ResearchGate, Academia, Scholars, uh, ORCID, so feel free to check them or download any of them or contact me directly. I used to work as a EEG European Association of Geoscientists and Engineers selected me in 2017 as the first uh, student lecturer in Africa. Uh, so I, through this tour, I had a chance to visit almost 11 or 12 universities all over Africa in Egypt and Nigeria. And it was a good opportunity to, to, to give a presentation about uh, geophysics, especially near surface geophysics. Uh, uh, the Society of Exploration Geophysicists also selected me as a, a, their honorary lecturer for the Middle East and Africa in 2019, just finished my tour uh, last year. I had a chance to visit, uh, to give my presentations to webinars, uh, virtual uh, lecturing. And also I visited uh, uh, some universities in Nigeria by myself, uh, like three universities were there. And it was really a good experience uh, for me. Uh, so let's go for the topic of our presentation is geofacets. Uh, what does the word geophysics mean as a word? Actually, if you have like a crystal or like a diamond... Doctor, yeah. Dr. Hisham, yeah. if, if, uh, just some housekeeping. Um, sure. If you allow me, please, uh, can you raise your voice a little bit? And sure. um, um, maybe we can now close the video so um, oh, sure. okay. the connection will be better. But also, yeah, just like uh, make it a little bit slow so everybody can, can understand and... Sure. and is your voice alert. Thank you. Uh, can, can everyone hear me? Is my voice clear enough? Yes. Yes. All right. Great. So, uh, what's geofacets? The word geofacets by itself means that if you are if you have a crystal, like a diamond crystal, for example, and if, if you think about this crystal, the Earth itself, like looking at the Earth from different angles or faces, from different perspectives. Actually. But I prefer. I prefer myself to uh, look at the geofacets as a combination of geographical base search, for example, like Google Earth, for example, which provide us with a map of any locality all over the world. If you add to that a text-based search, like for example, Google Scholar, Sevier by itself, which includes a lot of journals and electronic books, 
a lot of information that you can search uh, uh, any text within this uh, uh, database, huge database. If you combine both the geographical based search with the text based search, guess what? We get geofacets. So, geofacets basically try to find all the available information about specific locality in anywhere in the world, which is really useful. This is a very unique way of search, combining both the geographical and the text based search together for what specific spot. So we can think about geofacets as a web-based access to both geo-reference maps and trusted geological content embedded in any journal articles or even books. We can also think of geofacets as a tool, a useful tool for planning successful geological or geophysical field surveys or actually any geographically based search. For example, if we, uh, for example, in Cronau, uh, problem what you are facing right now. If somebody interested to, to know what are the hot spots where COVID-19 is active all over the world, he can do a search about that. If you'd like to do a search about even uh, some agricultural plants or medical plants in some places all over the world, whatever. It's, it's not only constrained by geological, geophysical, it's actually it's open for any topic related to geography or any, uh, of any place all over there. So it's an open area, but it's most commonly used for geological and engineering uh, solutions. So uh, <clears throat> uh, what's interesting is that GeoFACES not only searches within Elsevier database, which is already a huge database by itself, but it also searches in another different database, which is really amazing. It could search in APG, American Geophysical Union, uh, Geological Society of, of, of America, British Geological Society, Wiley, SEG, SEPM, SPE. Actually, it's a huge database. So it's not only in LCB, but all of these databases, which are all known to you because it's a very specified or very, very specific database for geology and geophysics and engineering. And also USGS, not the Geological Survey Database. So it searches all, all over this database and come up with all the available maps, tables, figures, uh, all the information embedded within all of these databases, which is really, I think, as a treasure. So it's very useful search to find out all the information you are looking for about specific area within this database. Classical or traditional search starts by, as you all know, that you find a paper and uh, you search within this paper for, for example, maps within the field or the stratigraphic column for geologists or uh, field photos or tables, uh, geophysical profiles, excitement profiles, for example, uh, or even graphs, all the information you, you tend to extract this information from the, uh, any paper you are looking for. So classical search, traditional workflow starts by searching uh, for any information of the area of interest, and then you try to extract this information by scanning them and maybe georeferencing uh, the maps and then try to save them in a format that's useful for the software you are using, for example, like GIS softwares or Petrel or any software that you can use for further analysis. What GFS did is just reduce all of these long steps or long workflow into just two steps. Just search for the whatever uh, area of interest to you and then it just can directly download all the important information you are looking for from the papers, from the maps, from the figures, from the tables, anything by the format you prefer. What's lately interesting about GeoFacet is that it combined it co with the most commonly software that's used in, 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 in especially in oil industry and other uh, industries as well, is that, like Petrel, like uh, studio, studio, like ArcGIS. Uh, GeoFacet lately uh, have uh, plugins or connectors that you can directly connect uh, uh, from Petrel, for example, directly to GeoFacets. You can just call it. So you, while you are doing your analysis, you can get all the information from GeoFacets within a Petrel or Studio. But the same story has been done with ArcGIS, like ArcMap or ArcPro. You can also directly from within GeoFacets download plugins uh, connect, uh, like for the, uh, uh, for the ArcGIS, like for the uh, ArcMap or ArcPro, you can download them as a plugins and connect them to GeoFacets and you can directly get connected with uh, ArcGIS. Of course, you still have to have your own license from ArcGIS or, or Petrel or Studio. This is something else. But you can, it gives you the facility to get connected directly within. Uh, you don't have to save your information and then open it from uh, Petrel or from ArcGIS. You can directly within your facets or for within Petrel, uh, you can directly connect to your facets. So this is a very useful uh, way for connecting between these uh, most commonly used uh, softwares for analysis. 
Uh, fortunate for Egyptian uh, citizens, uh, uh, the EKP Egyptian Knowledge Bank already have a license for agreement with uh, many publishers, including Elsevier. Uh, so we can anyone who are having Egyptian ID or living in the in Egypt have ID can access all of these databases for for free. Anyone else who are outside Egypt, they can check with his uh, institute or university. If they have a license, then he can have access, of course, to uh, LCV publication, including uh, uh, GFSs. So if he, um, for Egyptian uh, uh, citizens who can, who can have access to uh, EKP, can either directly, if it has a username and password, can directly, directly log in or can uh, make a registration. Registration is quite simple, it takes you step by step, whether you are a researcher, uh, a basic educator, even just reader or kids even, takes you step by step until you create an account. Once you have an account, you can have access to huge databases uh, like Elsevier, like uh, Wiley, like IEEE, like uh, many, many IOP, many publishers. Today, you are interested mainly in Elsevier uh, publication. And Elsevier by itself have many products like Science Direct, like Scobus, like e-textbooks. E e many, many other, but we are, uh, AI Compendix also useful for engineers. Uh, and today I'm, we are interested in GeoFast database. So if you select GeoFast database, click on it right here. This is a topic of our lecture today, or webinar today. Uh, you get this screen. This is the opening screen for the new version of GeoFast. This Dr. is by Hashem, the way. If, yeah? if I may interrupt, um, I, I would like to say that um, we, we were very lucky that the uh, Egyptian government saw the importance of um, that all researchers um, um, across Egypt can have access to geofacets and so that they can work and collaborate uh, and, and understand and have all the different tools that we provide for geofacets. And I think right now that decision is actually re reflected very wisely when everybody needs to do a lot of work and a lot of research from home and that they need to do a lot of this, this work um, um, and, and nobody knows when are they going to be allowed to go to the field uh, again. Um, so I'm, we're very lucky that, uh, that the Egyptian government saw that that way, but we're also very lucky that a lot of the universities across Africa has also decided to uh, give their researchers access to GeoFacet. So um, please, uh, through the chat or uh, after we, we finish the webinar, if you have any questions uh, on your access to GeoFacets across your university in anywhere in Africa, um, I'd be very happy to, to answer your questions. And I, I would also um, um, share my screen in the end and uh, share some tips on uh, remote access and how can you actually access GeoFacets or how we can help you access GeoFacets from home uh, when, uh, um, if the university access uh, is, is there, of course. Um, thank you, Dr. Risham, and I'm sorry for the interruption. No, uh, no problem. So when you click on GeoFacets uh, homepage, this is the homepage of GeoFacets. I just want to mention that this is the second version of GeoFacets. Uh, it had been just released like four or five months ago. I have the privilege that I was one uh, from nine uh, reviewers who reviewed this uh, uh, new version before its release. Uh, and I just would like to encourage all of you guys who are attending or listening to this uh, webinar to use GeoFacets extensively and uh, provide your feedback either to Engineer Ahmed or to myself. So your feedback will help us to improve the, sec the ne next release that will be released maybe uh, in the future. So please feel free to use it extensively, send your uh, experience, your feedback, your ideas for improvement. This will help will always be useful for future releases. So when you open the home page of GeoFacets, you get like a toolbar. We'll go through this toolbar because this is basically what how we can use GeoFacets efficiently. So uh, the first thing is that the map you are using, the default map you are using, uh, you are seeing right now in the GeoFacets homepage is not the only one. Actually, there are plenty of other maps. Uh, we can use uh, either ESRI maps or Bing maps. The default one is the hybrid ESRI map, but you can still also see the World Street Map or the National Geography World Map. Uh, for example, if you would try to use the Bing map, for example, this is a default hybrid, uh, this is a hybrid Bing map, but you can still also see the satellite map or a regular map for Bing map. This is, so there's, there's plenty of, of maps you can use depending on your background and what you would like to use uh, GeoFaces for. So this is one option which is the base maps. Uh, 
Uh, the second thing is that uh, there is something, there is an option called jump to region. If you would like to go to a specific area of interest or study, it can help you directly go. For example, you would like to go to Middle East or uh, wherever you would like to search for, it can give you direct, direct access to the area of interest you would like to search for. Another way to go to area of interest is through Zoom, Zoom to. In Zoom 2, you just need to draw or to highlight a drop draw rectangle for any area all over the world you're interested to see or to investigate and can take you directly to this area. So these are just uh, handy tools. You can try to use them when you use uh, GFS. The most important part of these tools, of course, is the search tool. This is basically why you are using GFS. So GFS have uh, different ways of search. The first one is called the keyword search. Second one is called spatial search. And the third way is advanced search. I'll go through each one individually so you can select whatever you convenient for you for your search because this is how can you this is a way you extract the information you are looking for about specific locality. For the keyword search, it's a simple way. Just type the keyword of your interest, depending on your background. If you are coming from mining background, you'd like to search for porphyry copper or for gold, whatever you are looking for, or for coming from uh, hydrological background, would like to search for a certain uh, basins, uh, water resources, or if you are coming from oil industry, would like to search for certain basins. So you just type whatever keyword of interest based on what you are really look, would like to search for. Second way is to use uh, the uh, spatial search. There is two ways in spatial search: is to draw a rectangle, which have a rectangle or square, or to use a polygon, which gives you actually any arbitrary uh, sh uh, shape you, you can search for. So if you selected, for example, any one of them, like rectangular search or polygon search, you get another menu. It tells you you'd like to search within or intersect. So what's the difference between both of them? Searching within is basically if it searches in, for all the information within the uh, search box you just draw. At the center point, around center point, the search box you just draw. Intercept, it searches for anything around the, the intersects with the search box. For example, if you are looking, searching for between two basins and you can you draw a, 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 a rectangular shape or polygon shape, you'd like to see the comparison between information from those two basins, from two areas of interest or two borders of countries, whatever. So just intersect searches around uh, the text box you draw and the within session within the center point or within the text box you just draw. These are two available options depending again for what you are looking for and your search structure. Third way of search is called advanced search. In advanced search, it, there's many filters you can use, like for example, the author, author affiliation, specific patient, specific country, publication. Here, many filters you can set to limit or to refine your search. You can also use more than keywords like a Boolean or a query, if you can use ANDED or 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 NOT, so you can create a, a, a Boolean search or a, or any actually any query you prefer. So this helps you to reduce the number of search results that you can come up with in the search. So this is advanced search. It, it's better to start with a simple search and then go the advanced search after that, but it's quite simple and easy to use. Uh, let's for, go for an example. I will start, for example, I would like to, uh, uh, do a search. Once you do a search for any topic, uh, let's see how you can get your search results first. When you do it, if you do any search, whether by uh, text search or, 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 or advanced search, whatever search you are doing, you, you come up with uh, three columns, three columns or three pans actually. The first pan is a filter pan. This filter pan shows you all the information related to the search results you got. For example, the content type, whether it is a journal, it is a, a book or a, a report. It gives you also the subjects uh, about all the topics of the results you got, the patients that included in this, re in this result, application year, all the authors have been involved in these uh, uh, search results or been or the author of the, all of these papers or journals. Uh, author keywords that's mentioned in the, in the papers or as a source title where it has been published and the publisher and content source. This is a filter pan. The second pan is the results pan. It shows you all the maps, uh, all the tables, all the figures, all the information embedded within the uh, results you got. This is plenty of information available there. And the third pan is about the map pan. It shows you the locality or the location of the results, whether they are, for example, in Egypt, in Sudan, where are these results are located. So it gives you the location of all the results you got. 
from these search results. Let's go for example, try one example, which is I tried for example, interested to search for area called Toshka. This area is located in the southwest part of Egypt. So I just, re just simply wrote Toshka. I'd like to search for anything, any paper that wrote about Toshka. So what I got here is uh, 110 results. This uh, from different places all over in Egypt and Sudan. 110 here means that the content within this paper from eight source documents, eight papers, including 110 uh, tables, figures, uh, images. This is the content within these eight source documents, eight, or eight, eight journals. So if I'm mainly interested to search for the papers within Egypt alone, I don't want the one that's in Sudan. So I added to my text, but to refine my text, I'm just interested mainly in Southwest East. So I included Southwest East as a refinement for, for refining my results. And I do, do it in refined results right here. So you can use the, uh, the, the pen, the filter pen for displaying the results and as well as for refining the results. If you'd like to display what the content of the papers, what kind of, uh, uh, keywords, what kind of authors, and you can also use it as a, a refinement tool as well. So I just uh, wrote Southwest Egypt and did include. So you can either include what you uh, were writing here or exclude it. This is, this is another option, I'll talk about it later. Uh, so when I did that, I, I got 15 results from a one source document, which I, the one I was looking for, uh, including all of these maps and figures and tables within this uh, 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 search. And you can also monitor the uh, search history. So it tells you that we started by Toshka and then Southwest Egypt and so on. It builds up as you add more keywords, it shows you the search history. And with this search history, any, at any point, if you'd like to remove any keyword or include a new keyword, you can do that. It's very handy by either and adding a new keywords or removing previous keywords. And then the search results will adjust based on that. So I got now 15 uh, search results from one document. This is a, 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 the regular keyword search. Let's do the same story, same steps using a, a, a spatial search. For example, in, uh, I, I'm going to use a polygon search here. You can either use a rectangle search or polygon search. I'm going to use a, a polygon search and I select within. I just would like to search within this polygon. So what I did, I draw this polygon you can, in red and I ask it to search within this polygon. So I got all of these uh, results. By the way, these uh, blue circles represent the locality uh, where this search has been done. And the number within this blue circle represent the tables, figures, uh, uh, images, all the content within. It doesn't represent the number of paper itself. It represents what's the inside, what's the content embedded in these journals. For example, so 47 here could represent more than one journal. Uh, but the, the, the content uh, representing the tables, figures, or, ta uh, or images of photos are 47. So it represents the content within all of these papers. But it shows here, uh, once you draw this uh, polygon, it shows you the location, actual location of this polygon, the points you select. Uh, it tells you that these results uh, are coming from uh, almost uh, six papers. Uh, if I add to that, I just would like to, any, to, to select the papers that relate only to Toshka, not about any other area. So I, I added the word Toshka uh, to this uh, polygon and asked the, the search for the papers that, uh, that have been investigated Toshka within this area. So I got uh, source documents, four source, source documents and highlights here the word Toshka, which I asked to search for in the title or within the context of the uh, paper itself. So we have here four source, do source documents and that contains 30 tables, figures, uh, images, uh, whatever inside these four uh, documents. Again, uh, uh, I can either represent either a source document or can represent it as within the results. If you click on results, it shows you all of these tables or figures or maps or, or, or field photos. And of course, it shows you the, their location, uh, these four, four documents with their location on the uh, map pen. Uh, you can, as I said, you can use the, uh, the, 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 the pen here, the filter pen here to refine the results, either for displaying or refining. For example, I selected what, who are the authors who did these four documents. So I found here number of authors who are published these four uh, documents. So you can here have a full control order to include or exclude any of these uh, uh, authors, for example. So for example, I highlighted, this is a paper for myself. Uh, I, I, I did about this area before. 
and you can either in include this author or exclude. If you are happy about certain uh, author who you think that his work is useful and have a good reputation about this, we can include this one. If you think that this author, uh, his work is not that good, you can exclude, uh, exclude it. You can do the same with anything. It's like the uh, patients, the publication year, the content type, the keyword, the author keywords. You can have a control of all, all over this filter pad by including or excluding it. So I, I decided to include this author because I know him. Uh, so uh, what we get here is this paper, which uh, shows that it is included Toshka and includes Southwest Egypt and included this author, have all fulfillment or all the what I asked it for. So now I'm happy by this result. Um, I would like to investigate this paper. Let me see a content of this paper, what's inside this paper. So just click on this paper. Once you click on it, all the information about this paper. Uh, you can see the abstract, you can see the author's affiliations, you can see the author's keywords, all the information about this paper. It can also show you, if you're interested to see the full paper, you can either display it as a read-only or from the, uh, the publisher, you can see the full paper. Uh, fortunately, you have subscription with all, most of the publishers here, so you can easily find the full paper and download it. So now when, it, when I click on it, so I just got the full paper here, can uh, browse it or you can download it for your own and now you got the full paper okay what about the content of the paper i mean about the the uh, the figures the images the tables how can i get them so what you, you need to do is just to click on any of the tables or figures on the left hand side in the uh, in the image in the images right here and you can just click download so all of these papers within the paper itself, uh, all these images or tables within the paper itself are downloadable. Once you download, asks you another one question. Would you like to save as a JPEG, KMZ, which is Google Earth format, a GeoTIFF with metadata or only GeoTIFF? All of these formats can be used with different uh, softwares for further analysis. Of course, I have to mention that you have to, these are the different uh, formats. I have to mention that you have to appreciate and uh, the copyright, copyright permissions. All of these uh, uh, images or tables or figures are protected uh, and, uh, by a copyright. Of course, you, you need to, uh, to mention that or to uh, uh, reference or cite uh, that you got this figure from that uh, paper. Uh, some, some papers or some figures could uh, require some uh, copyright when you have to get a right to uh, and content, but most commonly are all the, paper, all the figures and tables are, are, are downloadable. But you just need to appreciate the copyright permissions for all of this information. Dr. Hashem, um, yeah. if I may have a small comment on, on, on this part, because this is a question that I got and this is a question that I'm always asked. When do we use um, the uh, permission uh, tab? Well, Basically, as long as you're using all the content that you're downloading for your personal research and for your personal work, it, it is covered within the subscription. Once you are republishing some of these content that you've downloaded, the figures, the pictures, the tables, and you have not altered anything, you have not changed the maps, you have not changed, you're using the figure as it is, as you've just downloaded it. So you then you just need to go to the permission and then click on the get rights of the content so you can have a permission to reuse and to republish that content. Of course, this is goes side by side with the citation that you reference where you're getting uh, your information from other work. Um, so this actually happens very quickly and most of the publishers have this automated. So basically it doesn't take much time. So this should not be a problem. Once you just uh, click on the get rights and the content, it will take you to the to the editor uh, portal at the publisher's uh, website. And once you click on that, it is very automated. It takes a few minutes and they'll get an email giving you the permissions to reuse the content and for your own research publish. So um, please just whenever you're republishing some of that content, just get the rights and, and, uh, of that content. It takes a few minutes. It's not something that should discourage you and, and, and discourage your work. Um, thank you, Dr. Risha, please continue. Sure. So once you download these images or these photos, it can be used with any platform like ArcGIS, like Petrel platform, like Google Earth, like PowerPoint. Uh, for example, GeoTEF could be used with ArcGIS and Petrel. Uh, any images could be used with PowerPoint. KMZ uh, could be used with Google Earth. I'm going to show, for example, if I download 
an image or a map uh, with a KMZ format, and then try to open that with Google Earth. So Google Earth is, is a free, uh, so you can download it and it's free. So once I open the, the image, I just download it from this uh, paper. You can not set this, uh, it's actually it's an elevation map. So I, once I, I opened it, it just fits uh, within the, you can see my river right here, goes inside the image or the map, and then goes out. This, this, this tells you that this image is, is georeferenced, it's, it's in correct position. So it's, it's already georeferenced, you don't have to do any more for that. It's already georeferenced by, by, by geofacets. Another example is that this is a, a drainage pattern map, it's in uh, west of uh, Aswan uh, Nasser Lake just below the Aswan Dam. You can see that uh, the Lake, uh, Lake, uh, Aswan, Lake uh, of uh, Nasser Lake, it just go inside the, again, the map goes from it outside very smoothly. It tells you that this is in appropriate with the right position. So it's already geo -friendly. You can put as many images as you want. For example, this is a geophysical survey I did. I just put it right here or another drenched pattern map. So you can put as many photos or maps uh, uh, within uh, the Google Earth. It will help you to make appropriate decision if you would like to, for example, design a field campaign or a field survey in an area. Before you go there, you would like to see what work have been done in this area before. So it helps you to reduce your field work. You don't have this already have been done or to make a comparison or to fill any gaps in between. It also be useful when you are writing a research proposal, for example, and like to see what work has been done on this area before. You can put all the maps and figures about this area. It will help you when you are writing your proposal that you can see what areas have been covered and also reduce any cost. They don't have to reinvent the wheel, redo the same field survey that have been already done by others. So it helps you to uh, reduce your budget to bet have a better planning for field survey. So this is very handy and useful way. Besides the PowerPoint, Google Earth, Patreon, RKUS is also a very important uh, tool which is saving the tables as Excel. This is very important. Uh, most of the tables are just numbers. You have to retype it again and text, uh, because all the tables actually be an, like an image within any paper. But GFSs have the facility to, facility to save any table within a paper or a electronic book as Excel sheet. So you end up having this uh, saving as Excel, like this, if a free numbers, like, like, like within the Excel itself. And you can make use of this uh, data uh, that's in Excel uh, and, re and plot it within Excel or within ArcGIS. You can plot this information, for example, like this information, straight to tectonics or seismology uh, in, in ArcGIS or, or in within uh, Excel itself. And you can compare, if you did some work before about the same area, you can compare your work with others' work. We can display all the points you got from the Excel sheet at a, in ArcGIS. So it's very handy and useful way, but again, to appreciate the copyright. Uh, now you are done with your uh, search and you'd like to save your these results. You don't have to every time to log into uh, GFS to redo the same query and same search results. There's an, a tool that can, you can use for saving your work. So you can, if you go to set alert right here and then say save search, what will happen, it will ask you first that you need to register or log in to Elsevier. This is different from the EKP login. This is something that's within Elsevier, within GeoFacets itself. So what you need to do is just to create an account and uh, for username and password. And once you create that, you can uh, retrieve these results by going to My GeoFacets and then go to My Saved Search and Alerts. Once you do that, we'll ask you to use your username and password to log in, and then it, it will display all the search queries you have been done before. So this will show you all, 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 the, all the queries, all the keywords you have been used. What's more interesting is that there's an option here called alerts. It gives you a monthly or bi-weekly alerts by any new paper that have been published after you did this, your search, and including this, the keywords you have used. This is very important because you don't have uh, to, to every time to search for what, what, what had happened for, uh, for, for my search in any updates about my search because every day there's a new papers have, uh, are, going, are, are published. So when you do this alert to send you an email it tells you that there's a new paper or number of papers that have been published and includes the keywords you have been set in your queries before. So it'll keep you updated by any work have been done about this area, about this uh, locality you are interested in 
without even doing a, a re redoing a search again. It will just get you alert. And once you get the alert, you can go ahead and check this new paper. So this is a very useful uh, tool as well for keeping you updated by any new publications related to the area of interest. Okay, now I save my work and uh, I've been done. I, I, this is just a suggested workflow uh, from my experience, from my work. It tells you the steps you need to follow in order to come up with a useful one. Just you go to GFS's website and then try to use a, a text or special or advanced search uh, about the area of interest. Then uh, you uh, have a look at the, the results you got uh, for, for either for the, for the figures or tables or the article itself. You can uh, get them uh, a download by itself as a PDF. Oh, and then you can download the photos, tables, or figures, and should consider the copyright permissions. And then you can just, after that, save it in ArcGIS or Excel or Petrel or Studio for further analysis. It's one way. It's not the only way. There's many other workflows you can create by your own. But this is just what I usually follow up when I do my uh, search within GFSs. Okay, now this is uh, another option uh, in geofaces and it's very, very important, it's called overlays. This is especially important for people working in oil and gas exploration uh, or academics working in petroleum ge geoscience or petroleum engineering. This is very, very handy and useful piece of information. These overlays in include about five uh, layers or five base maps overlays coming from uh, uh, HIS, uh, Robinson uh, sedimentary basins, Wood Mackenzie, CNC Reservoir, and IODP data. I'll go through uh, each of these overlays one by one. So if I, first of all, have to go to overlays. And one, once you click there, you get all of these uh, five different overlays I just mentioned. Uh, if you click uh, the, uh, the first one, for example, which is the IHS World, Worldwide Sedimentary Basins Map, then you get this map showing all the basins, uh, all the basins and the gas all over the world. Uh, I try to zoom in, uh, I just click here, just to zoom in for the area of interest, I selected Egypt, and I managed to find the Nile Delta Basin. This is a Nile Delta Basin. And of course, you can do a search within this basin by highlighting this basin, and, and, this, uh, and immediately you can get all the results uh, that's rated or have been published about this basin, including all the uh, journals or the uh, figures, tables, all the information have been done about this basin. Similarly, if I decide to go for the uh, Robertson Global Basin Classification, this is another map, you get another map showing the uh, distribution of the basins worldwide. Uh, again, I did the same story here. This is the uh, Nile Delta Basin. Uh, this is another way of classification. Uh, I tried to compare actually both of them the uh, the Roberts, the IHS worldwide uh, sedimentary basin, which is the one, the inner one, with the uh, Robertson global basin. There's a minor difference, but are there are just two ways of showing the basins worldwide. Depends on your interest or your preference or your background. This is uh, just two two options available for showing the sedimentary basins for the oil and gas reservoirs. Uh, the third array is called the Wood Mackenzie. This is also, again, a very useful tool. It shows information about conventional and unconventional uh, metrics for oil and gas. Uh, for example, if you select Mac Wood Mackenzie here, uh, you get all of this information. I'm just going to discuss them in some details. Uh, so, for example, in uh, conventional oil and gas metrics, it can show you information about the basin uh, physical metrics, like the total number of exploration wells drilled and the success rate of these uh, wells. It also show you, shows you the country metrics, a uh, financial part like the uh, de uh, development value, the government take, you know, this information can be displayed as well. For unconventional gas metrics can show you the shell ga gas break even, the tight gas break even price, the coal bed methane break even. All of this information are showed you uh, uh, in some details. And if you'd like to get more details, you can click on the, to go to the Wood Mackenzie website for more details. But the information you can get, for example, this is an example from a total number of exploration wells within this area around Egypt. So it shows you with different color scheme for less than 20 is uh, it's in blue and uh, from uh, 20 to 100 in purple and then more than 100 well drilled are in, uh, in brown. Same story, you can also see the success rate uh, based on numbers less than 10% or 20, 10 to 25 or more than 25%. You can see all of this information can help you in your research work. Uh, 
For a CNCA reservoir, this is again very important layer. It shows you all the information about uh, fields, uh, oil fields, gas fields, methane hydrate fields, uh, carbon dioxide, bitumen. All of this information can be displayed as a dots with different colors. So uh, for CNC, it shows you the field analog uh, knowledge system. Uh, for oil, gas, or gas condensate in different, I say, different colors right here. But this is not only just a locality or a location, but this map is interactive, meaning that if you click on any of these uh, uh, color uh, bullets, you can get information about the field name, the reservoir unit, the basin, the operator, the primary hydrocarbon type, the secondary, and link again to CNC reservoir uh, field analog uh, knowledge system for more online service and more details as well. So for example, uh, I decided to click on this field right here uh, in, in, within the green uh, box and I got this information. It's called, uh, this is a Zafarana Zaf uh, oil field. It's in, in the Gulf of Suez and it, it gives you all of available information about this oil field and you can get more information of course if you click on this link right here. Another one is about the uh, a gas field. This is a gas field within the delta itself. It's Abomadi gas field and it's in the Nile Delta and it is uh, gives you the, op holds the operator and what kind of hydro primary hydrocarbon and again gives you more information, some, some information about this uh, uh, field and if you'd like to get more details you can just click and see and see Robinson for more details about this field. So it shows you a distribution for all the gas and oil fields all over the world basically. Uh, Another very important and the last one actually it is uh, uh, called the uh, IODP International Ocean Discovery Program. It gives you a very uh, uh, important piece of information which is the core data which is usually a very expensive piece of information. Many people look for the core data drill. Of course this is drilling within the ocean and all over the world. So if you click on this uh, IODP uh, uh, overlay you get information of uh, red, uh, blue, uh, red, green, and yellow about the uh, International Oil Discovery Program, Oil Discovery Program, and Deep Sea Drilling Project. Uh, this is really important. If you, for example, I, I, uh, it shows you all the primary core programs I just mentioned in different colors. And again, once you get these bullets in red or uh, yellow or green, it's not it's still interactive. Once you click on any of these uh, bullets, you get the metadata, including the lat long, the, the water depths, the core recovered, the uh, society. Uh, it, it, it also have a, a hyperlink or a link to the core data itself and any reports or scientific application about this uh, uh, field or this, this well. Uh, for example, here I clicked on this uh, deep sea drilling project in this uh, green uh, window and I got this information that it tells me that this is uh, uh, a deep sea drilling project with this that and long and the water depth is at that depth and the core recovered that at that thickness. If you'd like to see more information about the core data, you just click here, you get a full information about the, uh, the age, the uh, even the x-ray uh, mineralogy, actually uh, a very detailed information about the core data from the deep sea drilling project uh, at this point, at this site. And if you'd like to have a report uh, about this uh, core data, you can click on publication, you get a full report describing all these core data. This, this is really very useful and uh, big, uh, kind of very expensive piece of information yet usually you cannot easily get it. So this is uh, provided here for free. Again, this is another piece of information uh, about piece of information about ODC, which is a uh, ocean discovery program. Gives you again the lat and long, the water depths, the core recovered. And if you click on publication, you get this detailed report or uh, about this, well, about this site. Uh, uh, this is uh, what I would like to mention that uh, for about these uh, overlays, you, you, can, you can also dis uh, uh, show uh, more than one layer at the same time. You don't have to use just one at a time. You can overlay more than one layer. For example, I tried to overlay here the IHS worldwide sedimentary with the success rate of drilled wells within this area and the core data. These are three layers overlaid. You might be able to make comparisons or correlations and, uh, and have more, dis uh, more details uh, information about the, the the number of drilled success rate wells within specific basin and try to come up with a new information based on this comparison of different layers. So an, an option to overlay more than one layer is also available. Uh, you can overlay 
one, two or three or four or five overlays and then come up with some conclusion and correlate them to each, to each other. Uh, this is how it works. Uh, before I finish my presentation, I'd like to mention that there is a new product that's going to be released in the third quarter of 2020 called Geofacets Insight. This is a very useful, again, tool. It's uh, trying to get make an analogs with different oil fields or, or basins be using text mining and machine learning. And I just would like to encourage all the researchers and students who are really interested to get involved in this work. It's really useful. I just would like to show a couple of examples. First example here is about the analogs between different oil fields based on the sedimentological, geophysical, geochemical. It also includes the uh, reservoir analogs, the basin analogs, the play analogs based on the geologic time and, and whether it's a marine or continental or transitional deposition environment. What's really interesting and gives you also a confidence or probability score, gives you the correlation analogs is 50%, is 70%, is how, how good is the analogs? This is based on machine uh, learning. Like for example, a deep neural networks uh, technique for, uh, for, for, for learning. Uh, another way of is, is to show a visual information about the uh, source rock, the reservoir rock, the seal information visually for different fields all over the world. So this is again a, a handy and uh, useful tool. It's not released yet, but it's going to be released uh, in the third quarter of 2020. But what I would like to mention here is that I would like to encourage students who are doing their uh, final year projects or masters or PhD degrees that this is a hot topic to use machine learning for analogs for different fields and extracting information using uh, uh, neural networks, deep neural networks or uh, different ways of uh, machine learning. So I encourage you guys and if you did uh, this work I think uh, LCV is welcoming any contribution if you, you could you can contribute this is your facets and size in improving it so to be a good contribution from our side uh, for these new products when released. So I encourage all of you to get involved in this work. So uh, finally, uh, I just would like to mention that, uh, summarize, Geofacets offer a web-based uh, access to georeference maps and trusted geological content embedded in uh, journal articles. It's a, a good solution, geoscience solution, in, uh, that in enables search and integration of georeference maps from trusted sources. Uh, Geofast is a useful tool for planning successful geological, geophysical, or geographical field survey. It quickly finds relevant and high quality information with the field survey, provides published details about subsurface structures, properties, composition, its evolution. It saves time, of course, for uh, georeferencing maps for, uh, from reliable sources. It helps you to make better integration and interpretation for uh, a more informed decision about geological conditions for multiple areas. It can help you to download easily uh, any images or tables or figures. Uh, it can be used with GIS and uh, modeling and presentation softwares like ArcGIS, Petrel Studio, Google Earth, and PowerPoint. Uh, it also help you to deepen the geological knowledge and understanding of oil and gas basins. And finally, it finds analog data and relevant information to constrain oil uh, basin models based on source rock basin reservoir. I would like to thank you for your attention uh, to my lecture and please stay safe at your home. Hopefully everyone is safe and well and, and healthy. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you for your attention.